Hey guys, Philip Shadler here and today I want to talk about the market report. What is going on in the real estate market? Is there a housing bubble coming? Everybody's talking about it or is there no bubble coming? Stay tuned for some in-depth information. I looked at uh, different reports and I'm going to show you why I think there is no bubble coming right now. Are we in a housing bubble or are we not? As you can see right here, Zillow says, and this was May 13, 2022, we are not in a housing bubble, Zillow said, and Zillow economists say. And I would agree with that. And the most interesting thing about that is that Zillow actually projected in December that the growth would be around 11%, the growth of home values in 2022. They since revised that, as you can see here, this is done also, this was in February 17th. So the spring 2022 housing market will absolutely crush buyers, Zillow says, home prices to spike 22%. So they have increased their initial projection of 11% to 22%. This was in the spring market, which is now cooling down for sure. And so it's not, you know, the market is just not shooting up like it was, it's leveling out. It's not crashing, it's just leveling out. Again, this is my opinion. Now here, um, the housing market is sliding into a full-blown correction, says top economist Mark Sandy. And Mark Sandy is an interesting guy because obviously he's the chief economist at Moody's and he has an interesting um, projection about the recession. So he thinks that there is a 33% probability of a recession within one year. Again, in my opinion, recessions are often um, created by the fear of a recession. So if people um, you know, stop spending money, the whole machinery stops, slows down, and that is going to be a recession because the whole thing stops. So oftentimes it's the fear of recession what creates the fear and, and brings on the recession, in my opinion. What I have seen though is, um, for example, here, which is still happening right now, uh, this is a search for a client of mine, a home search, and we have sometimes still price increases. For example, here, there is a uh, house in Chatsworth and it was $980,000 and it has increased after three days, they increased the price to 55,000. There's another one here, uh, it's in West Hills, it's uh, $779,000 for a house and it increased $50,000 within 24 hours. Now, why would that be? I'm, I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, they listed, when we do a CMA as real estate agents and a comparative market analysis, we take the data from your neighborhood what has sold in a neighborhood within the last three to six months. Based on that data, we create a range. So it's a high range and low range. And during the pandemic, of course, everybody listed in the high range because everything sold way above asking price. That's where this frenzy was, which is now slowing down, which some people may see as a crash. It's not a crash. It's actually what the way to describe it is a deceleration. That's really what the market is. It's, it's going up and it's decelerating. It's not shooting up anymore. It's leveling out, which I think is a good thing. And also, the interest rate uh, hike is helping to stabilize the market. It's slowing things down a bit. While it is bad for some buyers, I understand that, you know, buyers are disenchanted because instead of having a 2.5, 3.5 interest rate for a mortgage now, they're, they're dealing with a 4.5 or 5.5% interest rate, which in a healthy market is really kind of normal. It's not that crazy. Remember, in the 1980s, we had 18%. So when they get this increase, when they make this increase within 24 hours or three, four days, that would indicate to me that they had so much activity once they went live with the listing, that so much activity that they thought maybe we're selling it too cheap, you know, so they increased the price. So that shows me that there's still a lot of demand. And I, uh, I went with a client to an open house and there were people standing in line on the sidewalk. This was about three weeks ago. So there was a lot of, still the high demand. And also just in Santa Monica, there was a condo, which was unusual, $499,000 condo, one bedroom, one bath, that sold 186,000 over asking price. So the market is still hot, but it's cooling off for sure. And, and, and that's a healthy thing. Now let's look at um, why why would you want to buy a property? Let's figure out your why. This is very important. You know, why do you want to own a property? Is it because you have outgrown your place? You want a bigger place? You want to own your own house? You, you want to have um, uh, built equity? Those are the reasons you should really look into, um, especially if you're buying long term. That should be a point of interest if you want to invest into real estate, you want to get into the real estate game. So here's a few reasons. 
One is more stable housing costs. So your mortgage rates will not vary a lot. They're going to be pretty much the same if you have a 30 year fixed, it's going to be the same. With the rents, they will always go up and rents are horrendous. In Santa Monica, two bedroom, two bath is probably five, $6,000 a month. So it depends of course where you go, but, but so you have more stable housing costs. The second reason uh, for buying a home is an appreciating investment which is also falling into the next point, it's an opportunity to build equity. So as your uh, investment appreciates and your equity builds, you can actually take cash out. So you can take uh, whatever you have built up in equity, you can take it out, remodel or use it for anything you want. I usually don't do that, I keep it in, but whatever, people have done that. You get tax advantages, so you can deduct the interest rates, for example, and it helps you build credit. And the seventh, last point is freedom to personalize. This I think is important and this was very apparent during the pandemic because during the pandemic, houses were very, very hot. They were a hot market because people who were in an apartment or in a condominium wanted to be in a house in case there's another lockdown. So they have a yard, it's easier to survive in a house than in a condo or in, a, in an apartment. So the houses were up way, way up and also houses with a pool. So people wanted a house with a pool. The, the demands for pool has been, was risen dramatically during the pandemic. So these are the reasons for buyers to purchase a home. Now, here is a little trick because people, uh, buyers are now a little bit uh, discouraged for um, purchasing because interest rates are higher. But one little trick to get your payment down, it might sound unusual, is a 40 year mortgage, which is also what lenders offer. And that can bring your payment down five, six, eight hundred dollars possibly. So this is something to consider because a lot of times people don't live 40 years in the same house after 10 years the average is seven to 10 years they move so the 40 years doesn't really matter it just gives you lower payment you still build the equity and then you sell and buy your next property that's usually how it's done anyway so now here's another thing fannie mae was also interesting because they predicted uh, a while back uh, that home prices in 2022 will climb 11 percent where before they said it was only 7.9%. So if Fannie Mae says that rates are going, uh, that the values are going to go up, I don't see a bubble really because it seems the demand is still high. There is one thing that's also an issue is for builders. Builders, for example, um, facing a big issue, and that is uh, number one, labor shortage. Uh, the supply chain uh, disruption is a huge problem for them and uh, lumber and concrete and windows and glasses has gone up tremendously. So there are stories I've heard that builders actually either abandon some of the sites because rather than losing too much money finishing the project, they walk away from it. Or like in this case here, you can see um, home buyers facing higher prices, unexpected cancer contracts in new home built. This was interesting because uh, if you ordered a house in uh, 2021 and is now being finished, now you can possibly face a 30 or $40,000 additional price on the price tag that you had paid for before. So if a buyer uh, has already done all the uh, lending in place and has the down payment, and now they have to come up with an additional 30, $40,000 because all the materials have increased, that could cancel a lot of buyers uh, contracts that could they just can't do it they, they don't have the funds for it so now all these things are canceled so from what i've heard is on the report is that the builders in america were only able to uh, provide 11 percent of the uh, provide housing new housing only 11 percent of what they had planned which still uh, didn't do much for the inventory which means we still have low inventory and high demand now there is good news and bad news ahead for home buyers so uh, looking at these pictures here uh, number one, the good news is home prices are likely to slow down next year in 2023. That's the good news for home buyers. So um, if they're thinking about buying now uh, because it's too high, next year they could, they could feel more confident because it's leveling out. Fannie Mae thinks the relief uh, for home buyers uh, will come not until next year. So that's a pretty good source. Now the bad news, here's the bad news. The bad news is Fannie Mae originally said home prices would climb 7.9% in 2022. But now since then they have revised their report and says prices will soar even higher. Prices are now expected to rise 11.2% next year. This is another indication for me that uh, Fannie Mae says this, uh, that there is no crash coming. They increase the value of the homes will increase because there's not, a much, not enough inventory. It's just simply, it's the demand is high, inventory is low. 
it's just a general rule of uh, of demand and, and high demand and, and low uh, supply. The housing inventory dried up, obviously, right during the or after the uh, pandemic, because everybody wanted to have a house, everybody. And this is clearly demonstrated by what happened, because everybody thought the market would crash, and it went exactly in the opposite direction. Um, anyway, so here, just quickly, I'll give you another quick shot of Alto's market data for realtors. And for example, in 9025, 9025 SLA. The median list price is $2 million. Uh, price per square foot is about 1,000, which is average in that area. But if you look here on this needle here, it still says it's a seller's market. Even Alto says this. And I, I think it's gonna be a while before this needle actually moves over to the buyer side and this side. Uh, but at the moment, it still looks like a strong seller's market, but it is changing. We're definitely experiencing this shift, you know, so, but I don't think it's gonna go down. I think it's just gonna stabilize. Anyway, I hope you find this report helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please give me a call at 310-918-2260. And one thing I want to mention really quick, um, I may have said that before, uh, if you are in the position to have the down payment and buy, then I think it's a good time to buy because sometimes people have not bought in the past. They had the money for down payment, but they have not bought uh, because the price was too high or the, the, the interest rates were too high. And then seven, eight years later, they look back and said, I wish I would have because the value in California tends to always go up. Anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to call me uh, anytime, no obligation, no cost. Uh, I'd be glad to discuss any options for you to get you in your home, home ownership. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you could uh, like and subscribe and maybe pass this on, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day.